Hey buddy, it's Invicta. It's time for not a wacky Wednesday. So basically, I was trying to do what I was talking about last week, which was doing like sort of like the vampire survivors or dead cells way of delivering items after every room. And it just got too out of hand too crazily. And I think that it wasn't really necessarily what I was hoping it would be. Um, I was thinking that maybe if I set the rules to give me two items, I could choose one or the other after every single room clear. That would be that would be kind of fun and interesting. But the truth of the matter is that like I just got like crazy good items, and I don't think it was just a lot of fun. And overall, like it wasn't really a challenge. Um, and then I just didn't come up with anything else for this week. So we get an extra eat and run today. Yay! Uh, but again, post in the comments down below if you do have ideas for Wacky Wednesdays. Some of, the, some, some of them are good, some of them aren't quite so good, but I still like reading them in, in the comments below. It just sort of helped me shape up exactly what I want to do for next week. So keep on doing that. I do appreciate it. Here's your meme of the day here. <laughs> <laughs> this one got a general laugh from Adam me because honestly, like I, I reckon I didn't recognize the meme at first, and then I realized what meme it was. The guy screaming at the tornado, like here it comes. This was sent in by Painter DND W40K. Title third was episode 716 meme, and that's how you beat Boss Rush. <laughs> I, I don't know. There's something forever hilarious to me with just plastering this Invicta logo on someone's face and then calling it a meme. And like, I just, I, I hear myself doing the voice for it and it just is so stupid to me that it makes me laugh. CJ is going to be X-Ray, 8 Mike, X-Ray, 9 Delta, Lima 1. We've got money equals power and we also have a game kid, which I'm just going to use against Sloth right here. Uh, but yeah, so I... It, I guess in a way the the wacky Wednesday thing for the like the dead cells or the roguelite you know choose the item after every clear that didn't it, it didn't pan out the way that it does in the other games because there's something though there's something that I forgot to like even consider and that's in dead cells for example if you get one of those upgrades like the the you know like the red green or blue upgrades in there it's been it's been so long since I played that game um it represents stats. It's not always going to be. It's not always going to be an item. So I thought, well, okay, well, if we do that, then maybe I can get like a random stat up um, after every room or something like that. But the problem is that I can't randomize that value. And I also, if I said like we gain, like after every room clear, we gain, I don't know, maybe 0.25 of of random stat. As you can, like that wouldn't mean too much for like say, you know damage or something like that but that would mean a lot for like a tears rate and if we if it ended up hitting the same stat over and over and over again like it would just get out of control in a hurry that's what i found out so i said okay well then maybe if the if the random stat ups are not going to work i could try random items and limit like the uh, like the you know the item pool so i don't actually get like angel deal items or devil deal items or something like that after every room uh and that also didn't work because like i was just getting like the really good global drops like cricket's head um and uh, Cricket's, not Cricket's body, um, uh, the stapler and that sort of stuff. And like, it was just, it got out of control in a hurry. So I was like, well, this isn't really interesting either because it's, I'm like, I'm just gonna just destroy this run. So yeah, it, it after a lot of experience, like I probably spent no lie, like close to an hour on, on seeing if I can get this to work in an interesting way and I just couldn't do it. So um, unless there's like a, there's some sort of like modification that you can make in, in uh, the rules itself that I don't know about. Um, I cannot randomly assign stats at like a sort of like a random interval. So yeah, it did. We'll, we'll have to figure something out. But what better way to get all wacky than just having a extra Eden run? You know, we get an extra Eden run this week. Hooray! I have it on good authority that some people don't watch Wacky Wednesdays because they just don't like the uh, they don't like the fact that it's not like a canonical uh, Eden episode, and that's it. I, like I totally get that. I understand. You know, not everyone likes watching the challenges or you know read runs or random runs or anything like that. And that's cool. I try to I try to change up the change it up every now and then. But obviously, the bread and butter is going to be Eden runs um, until we lose, and then you know we go back to doing all, just a random a random run, and then once that loses, we go right back to doing Eden runs. So. That's just that's that's just how it goes. <laughs> like that was the rotation for the longest time on my channel. Um, it was uh, was simply doing Eden and then uh, switching off once uh, once Eden died. We go over to uh, we over we do a, uh, a random run and then once the or the random I guess random streaking and then once that stopped we we just went back right right back to Eden. So you know it is nice to break it up every now and then, but you know playing Eden, playing Eden, I still think it represents still like the best challenge in the game because it is truly 
everything is random. Like it, it's like a it's like a Kaizo Pokemon run in in, in Isaac. You, know, you got you have random stats, random items to start with, and that's it. And general game knowledge is going to be put to the test. And forcing yourself to sort of adjust to bad situations is what Eden is kind of teaches you and is all about. There you go, Game Kid. Definitely getting its definitely getting its work out here. So we do find the boss room, and we also have uh, Holy Mantle activated, courtesy of the Wooden Cross, which, you know, it, could, it, it is going to shield us. Um, I still think it's worth it for us to at least find the item room. It's probably Monstro that we're going to be fighting, so, like, we can use t the Tower card on Monstro, and then, assuming that we still have the Wooden Cross activated, we don't have to worry too much about getting hit. So, that's... Good because if we end up bombing ourselves inadvertently, then obviously we're like we're not gonna get rung up for a hit or anything like that. Um, I was saying I don't lose the wooden cross. Obviously, we could also go into the game. We could also go into the curse from Cursey of Game Kid, uh, but that would uh, break either wooden cross or it's it's just a giant waste. So being a cricket's body, we are gonna get cricket's body. And that's going to give us a splash shot. Cricket's body is not... It's not automatic. It does give you a tears up that that obviously does break the tears cap and everything. But you have to be careful of the jostling that uh, that all the extra little splash damage shots do. Uh, Larry, Larry Jr. got completely curled up on that one. And I am going to take Lord of the Pit. Even though this puts us down at a half heart. Remember, we do have the Holy Mantle activated. Courtesy of... Uh, Courtesy of the wooden cross, so and flying is just too dang good not to have. And yes, I realized that there was also a key back there, so um, we're gonna pretty much have to use the book of revelations right away uh, just to get us out of the danger zone. This is also going to give us the bookworm transformation, which is great, but. The clear winner here is going, and we say thank you to the Game Kid, by the way. Game Kid absolutely beast moded it, the first two floors for us. Um, but us having a Soul Heart generator now, plus flying, plus the whole, the temporary Holy Mantle, and uh, we're looking for we're looking for a good time here, looking for a grand old time, especially especially if we can get into this bedroom here, uh, that would give us three extra Soul Hearts, and then we're really going to be popping off. So we get random black Soul Heart too. I tell you what. Hopefully there's a bomb in here, and there is. I'm going to buy the bomb. The reason why I want to buy this bomb is because it's going to require not one, but two bombs to get into the uh, bedroom here. Is there a secret room? Nope, never mind. Uh, maybe the secret room could be adjacent to it, but it was not. So because we have no red heart containers at all, we're now going to gain three soul hearts, which is fan dabby tastic. You would, you would even say fan dabbin tastic. Dab, dab on all the haters out there. Can't dab on the haters, man. Like, the, the haters are your biggest your biggest fans. They're the ones who watch all your stuff without fail. <laughs> we get a balls of steel pill too. Okay, now now this is just getting ridiculous with how how many soul hearts we have very very in 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 rapid succession. What I'm trying to say in very very rapid succession is a, a little bit of outrageous. We didn't even need to use the Book of Revelations at this point, had I known that this was going to happen. But, I mean, here we are. I do know where the secret room is, but once again, bombs are bombs are kind of a rarity. I'm not sure what's going on with the, with the bomb drops lately, but, like, they have been not showing up at all. I'm not for it. Need our, we need our bombas. Got to have those big bombas. Loving our movement speed, loving our tears rate, loving everything here. We might as well just go fight the horseman. We know it's going to be a horseman because we use the Book of Revelations, so this is no surprise at all. We have a Degas rune, which is going to help us clear any curses that we might have on the next floor. And if we need an emergency soul heart, we can just use it. Down goes Pestilence, and we, or, uh, yeah, Pestilence. We're going to get Cuban meat. And I still would love to find another bomb, so I can go at least into go to go into the uh, secret room. I know where it is. Okay, well I tried. Can't tell if that's a red champion or, or if it's just shaded weird. 
So we do lose the Holy Mantle right at the last second. Um, I'm going to go back into the store and buy that sack. The half price one here. And there is two bombs in here. One of them, however, is a troll bomb. Yeah, evil charm. We don't have anything that is, that is predicated by luck. So, and we don't have another bomb. We could we go we could go in the curse room. Actually, we should try to find a way to break this uh, this golden heart because it's going to drop inside of the. It's going to drop inside of the curse room, so I don't necessarily want that to happen. I'm going to break it on this mimic chest here. And yeah, look at that. We get the Virgo shield. Virgo was an item that I didn't even mention, by the way. We got out of that item room. Virgo is going to give us neutral or positive pills. So rejoice, pill fans. We can go ahead and take those juicy, juicy pills. You also know and love. Okay, so we're still going to get charged for a half heart coming out of here, but uh, it's not really going to matter because you know, we've got plenty of HP. And also, remember, we've got a fantastic soul heart generator here in the Book of Revelation. So all systems are go here. We are literally flying through this run. This is going to break our holy mantle, and that's fine. Got ourselves a Yave. I mean, if anything, that just saves us a half soul heart, so... With the amount of mobility we've got, we should be okay for the for the short term anyway. Perks. Perks is not really going to do much for us, obviously, because we just... Oh, there's, there's no enemies in there to, to hit us. But with increased mobility comes increased survivability. And even though our damage really isn't all that great, which, I mean, if, if you look at our stats, like, it's really not... We're still thriving here just because of our tears rate and the splash damage effect from Cricket's body. And again, we're able to protect ourselves. In two, it's a two-fold defensive pact here that we've got. On one hand, we, of course, we've got the Book of Revelations. We're able to regen any sort of uh, HP loss that we incur. And then secondly, we have our mobility. So it's not we're not relying upon our damage to protect our HP this time around. It's more so our, our ability to stay safe courtesy of Lord of the Pit. So the reason why I took it, even though at the time it was a little bit risky because we, we went down to a half heart, essentially. No. Lack of a G and uh, Cricket's body can work fairly well. Um, but I don't like this. I don't like the shot speed down that we get out of it. We don't need it at all. I think that we would just be making our tears worse. Lots of keys here. Still no bombs. It's very odd. Very strange that there's there's been very a uh, severe lack of bombas. A key. Okay. We could. I mean, it, if all else fails, we could just go play the arcade for a bomb. Of course, our money is going to give us more damage based on money equals power. Look at that. We were up to full, full HP. We did finally get a bomb. We get Black Candida, which is going to instantly nuke our damage, but obviously giving us that sweet, sweet curse immunity that we all know and love. Uh, I should have bombed the... Well, it's an 83%, but I'm still going to go bomb it anyway. Go back and bomb the Keeper here. Okay, we are at one of the oddest numbers, which ironic, is ironic because it's not an odd number, but we are at one of the weirdest numbers that you can get for any sort of devil deal or angel deal <laughs> deal, deal chance. 88.8%. You do not see that all that often.
I didn't even mean to take Blood Oath, but I guess we have it now anyway. Not that it really matters, and that's because it doesn't. All right, still plenty of time for boss rush here. Definitely would be a crying shame if we didn't get boss rush. <laughs> a quick attack there by the Mr. Mine. So we don't want to use the book revelations on this floor because a we're already at full hp and b we don't want to get a horseman this time around uh, we would love to get a boss an actual boss item to drop because as great as money equals power is ideally we're not going to get too much benefit out of it in the early to mid game and the reason for that is because we've been getting a lot of money to drop which then we turn into items or you know stuff that we need courtesy of, of good shops a good shops is a relative term because lately it seems like shops have not been all that good. So here's the hoping that we actually get a good shop uh, on this floor and we're about to find out. Blood Oath, by the way, is not going to activate because we don't have any red heart containers, but if we did, it would drain all of our red hearts and convert however much, however much HP it uh, took away from us and turn it into damage. Which some people still really, really like, and I'm like I, I under, I understand the argument. the ar The argument there is, well, you're not doing anything with those red hearts anyway. You might as well turn them into damage. And yeah, I get that. But what if? Stay with me here. What if we actually need that red heart HP to, like, I don't know, stay alive? You know, and it, especially like, I don't know how we end up running into that one. Um, especially in a low in like a high red heart situation where you don't have really any like you might not have room for like soul hearts or anything like that in your run um and i want to keep some of those red hearts for like temperance machines or uh or demon judgments you know that that sort of stuff it, it's just the the removal of the of the control from the player which is what i hate about blood oath it, it, it's a very dangerous item Get eye drops, which is going to give us a tears up. So now we can freely use our uh, Book of Revelations in case we ever needed to. We definitely play the Sacrifice Room if we end up finding one. We've got plenty of HP to do so. The room's right there. All right, Lover's Car is not going to do much. We did get Sackhead, which is a great upgrade for us. Sackhead generally leads to a lot of uh, a lot of pickups that are, that are worth it. Cracked Orb is, yep, certainly something. But uh, I don't want to go exploring. We we we've had too many close calls with Boss Rush to where like I actually do want Boss Rush, and we kind of need Boss Rush too on this run. So we're just going to go for it. All right, once again, we can start using our book revelations freely right now, just because there's no such thing as a Depths 2 or Necropolis 2 uh, horseman. It's always gonna be the mom fight. It will forever be the mom fight. So if we happen to run into some situations where we need to use our HP for something, or like we just take a massive amount of damage out of nowhere, uh, then you know we don't have to worry about losing one of our boss items. I remember the good old days when mom used to drop boss items. Seems like only yesterday. We can still take kind of a relaxed, we still kind of take a relaxed approach here. Um, 
with this run. Because I think that we're still going to have plenty of time to get into and add a boss rush. Attack of the bad space for items to continue. Not one Isaac's tears. get the sun card which is going to show us the rest of the map i will take starter deck so that's going to give us a extra card slot and hey look at that we got the empress okay I'm down with this i'm down with this get some money back in our donation machine another greed fight well i guess i should be happy that we're not getting greed inside of the uh inside of the shops so that's a plus there we go a little bit of extra money which gives us damage harm no foul there we just got a charge key so if we end up doing, uh, if we end up, if we end up getting something in boss rush that's worth it, we're gonna actually have to do boss rush. But we'd already gone to basically everywhere that I wanted to go, uh, in uh, on this level. So and I didn't really want to waste time looking for the fool card. So hopefully, if whatever we get in boss rush is gonna be good enough for us to just smack it down. But right now our when your tears rate is almost eclipsing your damage, that's that's not a good sign. Let's get like, I mean, unless you have like soy milk or something like that, then that's a great sign. Blue mom is the summoner mob. She will just sit there and usually not stomp every now and then, but she will summon at least one or two ads per wave. Take the Polaroid for some damage. And we get Goathead and Abadab Ding Dong, which is a fantastic damage upgrade for us. The D Sizzle. The D6 would be the only thing that would be worth taking in here. Doing the entirety of boss rush for the D6 though. I'm gonna say no. Cause we're not gonna get much utility out of the D6 until maybe the chest. Sorry about that. Relaying something to my artist. Alex. Been doing a fantastic job with the thumbnail art. I'm glad everyone's been enjoying him. I think he does outstanding work. This judgment card here. I honestly wouldn't mind a red heart upgrade. It would give blood it would give blood oath something to do and also give us a cheaper devil deal and by that of course I mean get a uh holy useless item. Again, we're not gonna use the book of revelations unless we absolutely have to, because I don't want to trigger the death fight on here. That would do it. Somehow turn into a Globin. And we got the death fight anyway. That's, that was a weird loading screen. It like cut off like randomly there. I think the game didn't like the timing of that Emperor card. Oh, we had a long way to go too, yeah. 
There we go. We need a cube of meat. And yep. So again, we uh we could definitely use some damage. I think everything else is in a good spot. I like our shot speed, I like our movement speed, I like our tears rate. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't turn down a tears rate upgrade, but like some damage would definitely be nice or a really good tear effect. Piercing shots. I think death should always drop death's touch or a cube of meat. Like it should be one of those two. Or maybe even death's list, like make it a choice. Make it like a triple item pedestal. That was sort of another concept that I was thinking about for the, the sort of survivors-esque, the survivors-like episode of uh, Wacky Wednesday. And I was just gonna be like, well, what if I just gave every boss pedestal three choices of items and I can only take one? And then I was like, well, that's just, that's just options except with extra steps, basically. And I don't, I don't think that that's interesting for people because I would just pick the best one and then that's that. So, you know, the, the, to find the balance of, of wackiness there with just simply just playing the game as normal is, is a little bit, a little bit tricky. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to still make things interesting for people for the, for the wacky Wednesdays. And today's obviously not a wacky Wednesday, but you know, we, it's, it's. In a way, it's kind of wacky if you squint really, really, really hard. The fact that, like, you know, we got an extra Eden run. Some people will be happy about. You know, some people just like, you know, curling up with a good, good hot drink or cold drink. And uh, watch some Eden. And I'm down for that. A lot, I know a lot of people use these videos like sort of like their go-to comfort videos or background uh, ASMR videos and that sort of thing. And I and that like I appreciate that. Like, like second only to probably like the haters out there, like or the the ones who do that who fall asleep at the, with the videos. No, that's not true. Way there's way more supporters out there who watch the videos than anyone else. Y'all guys and girls out there, you keep it. You keep the channel going doing that and I appreciate that there are bigger channels far greater than mine that that look with envious eyes is how dedicated the mosh pit is I've said it for many years and I'll continue to say it that I'll never take advantage of that always always give credit and thanks to people who deserve it the fool car which I'm not gonna take we do get guppy's head um, I wish we had school bags so we could take both of them we still kind of had to stick with the Book of Revelations because we're going down to the dark chest for lap number one. Um, and we're going to need those. We're going to need to be able to recover those hearts. I have, I do have my own, my own background comfort videos that uh, I don't have in a playlist. I just simply just, just look them up on YouTube. Um, I really like the, some, some of them, I, I mean, I, I love, I love listening to, to field days. Uh, the Australian, uh, is an Australian survivalist channel. And honestly, like, like I said before, those, those channels are just as much of a cooking channel as they are like a survivalist channel. It's pretty, it's a pretty fascinating sort of melding of war of worlds there of genres of, of videos game. I'm just going to go get this holy card. What do you think about that? I like listening to field days. Um, I usually put on a... Like if I'm if I'm grinding away at Diablo or something like that, like I'll and I'm not streaming, of course. Um, I'll usually put on like the there, there's the Phasmophobia playlist that uh, Markiplier did with uh, with uh, Sean Bob and Wade. 
I love listening to that just as background noise just because it's it's just like it's people talking, you know, like it's it, it's white noise to me. And uh, you know, it's, it's especially good whenever you hear friends talking amongst friends, you know. No, I'm not saying that I'm friends with, with Mark Blyer or them. I'm just saying they're friends together is what I'm saying. The natural cadence of friends, longtime friends speaking to one another is a is a good it's a good comfort comfort mind food, you know. I know that there's some people who use the uh, the old school collabs that I used to do with Tet with TB and uh, Crendor and Jesse and Mathis, old Team Le stuff. Lately, honestly, I've been putting I've been putting a lot of uh, a lot of Huskies re-uploaded uh, Bronze League heroes in the background. I'll use that as a uh, as sort of like my background grinding noise white noise machine. Oh, I didn't even see that Aratoma chunk there. Ironically, the biggest danger in this room is not Teratoma or the spiders. It's the fiend that starts firing at you. So take him out with the orbital. We do have a sack room here, but unfortunately, I don't think... Okay. Well, I don't think that this is the uh, the right time to play it. That is a near full clear of Shoal. Wouldn't mind taking Lard. That would give us some Devil Deal currency as well as... Uh, movement speed upgrade or movement speed downgrade which we don't I don't actually want a movement speed downgrade but there's the ultra seeker room and also cracked orb opened up the super seeker room the soul of eve uh we actually don't need the sun card anymore because like we've got an emperor card so we're, we we're gonna go straight to lamb on the on the next floor seeing an 8.01 one damage, and that's courtesy of uh, unequals power, of course. What? I'm gonna need an instant replay on that one, ref. Okay. Apparently, Stanley's taking the lamb school of movement course I'm gonna go all the way back here now that we know where the secret room is I'm also gonna go grab that Degas rune just to get one of our soul hearts back Check out the secret room. Definitely wouldn't have been my first guess of where it was, but Cracked Orb shows us that I was wrong. And again, we could play the sack room, but I just don't think that it's worth it, especially with us not with, like, we're, yeah, technically we're done with the level by now, but like we wouldn't have a great way of recovering a lot of that HP and it would just put us too far against it. Plus, remember, we've got this devil deal coming up. We get Blood O- or we get, um, Sack Altar. Definitely want Eye of Belial. We're gonna use Sack Altar here, and we get Little Abba Dabba Ding Dong. He's made his return. His glorious return. We're gonna unleash the crows on Lamb. Get him, birdies. Get him. Get him. Go on, get. It won't get. Look at that. Soul of Eve doing work on Lamb. Yeah, we got piercing shots. We got the book of revelations. Got ourselves a victory lap.
Check and see. Mike, seven, Zulu, two, nine, Papa, six, Alpha. All right, so now... Now that we're back on the on the side of the living for now, uh, hopefully Money Goes Power can get a chance to shine. We do get a golden bomb there. And, yep. Say Kidney Stone. Kidney Stone is... I, I vibe with Kidney Stone. Especially when we have piercing shots. Small rock. Mom's key for sure. Um, I will, if I have to, use the book Revelations. Um, again, I'm trying not to use it on floor one because I don't want to get a, I don't want to get a horseman. Although we probably will anyway. We got a hermit card. Hermit card going to teleport us directly to the shop, which is nice. Really, like the standout for the first run was a hundred percent Lord of the Pit. Like that, that early flying upgrade we got from that very first Devil Deal op opened up the world in a big way. <laughs> Their second golden bomb, because I mean, why not? Game's like, haha! I heard you complain about not having bombs. We'll have more bombs than you need. Gonna take blue cap here, which is gonna give us a tears up. Shot speed down and HP up. And we can go back and check out this uh curse room now. We still have the holy mantle activated from Wooden Cross. Take a little gander real quick. Eyeball piercing shots. Especially, especially if we can combine that with the bookworm shot is just so good. Is yes, last Yave here. So 30, 30s all around on the bombs, coins, and keys. That's something you don't really see all that often here. But it is a victory lap, so, you know, we're just cruising, having a good time. Blood Oath finally gets to do something. Congrats, Blood Oath. We're very happy for you. I mean, you weren't even, like, really invited to this party, but, you know, he, sh he showed up anyway. So I can use the book of Revelations until after the boss because the game does some it does some some freaky some freaky stuff sometimes with the way that the horseman spawns. Sometimes it will work on floor two and sometimes it won't. Victory laps seem to throw off the whole like you know horseman on on odd oddly numbered floors routine that uh, that we see a lot. So where in the world is the boss room? We go back and go pick up that other hermit card, which we probably will. Oh, magician. The magician. The wild card. Okay. 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 Wild card is interesting because we can use that to emulate any anything that we did. So either our spacebar item or um, our consumable. Oh, we'll got the item here. Not for us. Not today. It's like the game has been scared of giving us guppy items lately in Devil Deals. It's very, very strange. Another tier and shot speed up here. I was hoping we would get maybe a little bit extra money. We already know what's inside of the Devil Deal, obviously. Um, it wasn't a guppy item. Another shot speed and tears up. Okay, now now we're just getting a little crazy with the tears right here. Pandora's box. We're just gonna use that. We get booster pack. Hooray! Booster pack. Booster pack. Queen of Hearts. Air walk and devil card. I mean, I guess we can hold on to 
Queen of Hearts. Okay, so we do happen to get a lot of Red Heart HP. We can maybe use that for a sack room. Or D-Bizzle. We don't have D-Bizzle yet, but maybe he'll show up. You never, you never know, man. That that guy, who who knows what Dark Bum does on his day off. As the as the coaches of this team, we don't we don't ask questions. Players, they can go do whatever they want as long as it's legal, or at least, or or at least interpreted as legal by the rules of the football team. Uh, yeah. Let's go back here and, well, first off. Okay. There's a, there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on in the NFL. Trust me. I, I run a football podcast. I, we, I'm, we're very much in tune with, well, some of us are very much in tune with the going, the, the the going ons of the of the football world, and let me tell you something: it's it's not a pretty world to live in, or around, or even play in. Well, that just reminded me of I, I don't know why that reminded me of the of that that crazy dream I had on what was it Sunday? Yeah, I think it was Sunday. I, I don't I don't know I don't know what what triggered this this dream because like I hadn't even watched any Star Wars for a while right and so basically what my dream was is that I was some kind of like cyborg cybernetic being like I was human but like I had like cybernetic force powers it's very strange I could fly and I could do all sorts of stuff like I was the all-powerful god in the in the dream and that's that's one thing for my dreams that like i i i lucid dream so like i when i'm in my dream i know that i'm in a dream so like i can just make it as cool as i want it and it's really really fun and uh i just decided that i was going to be able to fly and also in this dream my i guess i was like i was some kind of security guard or in the military or something but i worked with a superior officer or i was an assistant to ewan mcgregor and i don't mean like a Ewan McGregor type person or character. It was actually Ewan McGregor. Um, I'm not sure why, because I've, I, again, I haven't watched, I haven't watched Star Wars in a while. And Samuel L. Jackson, that was something that I, that I wasn't able to tweet out because I just ran out of characters and I didn't want to like lose the plot. But Samuel L. Jackson was also there. Oh man, friend finder. Now you got my attention game. Uh, but Samuel Jackson was there, and he was like the the superior officer or something. And uh, earlier in the dream, I had to stop this in this giant, in, like invading robotic army. By the way, the setting is the like the 1930s in like in rural America. It, I, I don't I don't know why I don't know why any of this was going on. Um, that that. But the Ace of Diamonds could be pretty good here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to turn all this into money. Ace of Diamonds. So the settings was 1930s America. Like, think like Shawshank Redemption. Like the beginning of Shawshank era, right? And uh, I'm essentially Iron Man, but I have like, I have like, I, I'm at an actual cyborg that has force powers for some reason i stopped this giant invasive alien robot army from destroying the town that i was in which i was also on like i was also on like the softball team apparently <laughs> and uh and i re all i remember is that like i i see i had to secretly save it because no one knew that i had these powers and on top of that they had this giant rail gun that was like super duper powerful and it was aimed at the town and oh here it comes and i basically like it fires full blast at me like with a million billion rounds and like i was able to just simply like just sort of neo them away uh, again my my dreams are as dorky as i am um but i was but i would, i knew i was in a dream so like i made myself that powerful anyway anyway I end up doing it and like, and I get back to the lab that I worked at or something, a security office, whatever it was. 
And uh, no one, of course, like believes me that like, you know, I'm, I actually knew that this was happening. I've got like futuristic powers and all this stuff. And Samuel Jackson was one of the one was one of those characters, and he was like, "Yeah, this this is this is total BS." And uh, so I had to prove to him that <laughs> that it was all true by just like just just conjuring up some kind of holographic power and just showing him the the entire battle of me like stopping the railgun and and beating all the robot aliens and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like. When I woke up from that dream, I was like, wow, that was a really cool dream because, like, I I usually don't give myself the ability to fly. Like, like I, just flying. Flying is, like, my favorite thing to do in a dream. Um, and sometimes I'm able to fly, sometimes I'm not. It's, like, it, it's weird how, like, sometimes it just doesn't work. But when it does work, oh, man, it's so much fun. Um, and I remember waking up from that dream, and I was just like, what? Like, where the hell did that come from? I... You, you would think that I just got done watching a bunch of Star Wars or something, and that's the reason why Samuel Jackson and, and Ewan McGregor were in there and Force Powers, blah, 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 but I, I swear to you, I, I hadn't. I haven't watched the Star Wars flicks in quite a while. We just got Guppy. We didn't get Guppy blocked for once. We'll definitely take Damocles, too, with us having nine lives, so rejoice, Dama fans. But there was also this weird thing where like I couldn't show that I had these powers in the public so like I had to like sort of stealth my way back to where I worked and the only w and one of the ways I could travel was like I could travel through flowers and I'm not sure why that was <laughs> like I had to like do this weird this weird traveling animation thing where like I could only travel through certain types of flowers and like when I did it was like a it was almost like a Jim Carrey in the in Ace Ventura 2 coming out of the back of the rhino way I, I don't know don't ask me and many of you are like oh this is way too detailed to be actually like a real dream like no I I, I, I kid you not like I remember almost all of my dreams Especially lucid ones. Those are the ones that I, that I remember not. And also, those of you saying, "Oh, you must have, you must have really got blazed out there, Sinvicta." No, I, I don't partake. <laughs> this is this is all sober. My dreams are just sometimes very vivid. But that shows you that I was also sleeping good. I slept I slept pretty good on uh, on Sunday. I think it was Saturday. The, that was the day that I slept for ten hours, and I was like, "Man, I don't even know what. I, I don't even know where I am." Oh, wow, this is a double. This this would be a double item pedestal. Unfortunately, we're not going to take D one Hizzle because we've had quite enough of those re rolls lately. I don't think we'll be doing that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know, man. Like, I just there's something about something about whenever I do get to dream, and I know that I'm in a dream. That that's that's when all the fun stuff happens. That's how I used to break uh, break nightmares. There were times when I would get sleep paralysis, and uh, the best way I've talked about this before. The best way that I've found to stop sleep paralysis from ever happening ever again is just crossing my arms, like I'm sleeping in a coffin, like a vampire, and I've never, never, ever dealt with it again. I used to get it almost every night, and every single time I did, the only way that I could break myself out of the uh, out of the paralysis was to like bite one of my lips very very hard and that seemed to kind of shake me loose uh but ever since i there's the bizzle ever since i i discovered the uh you know the the biting or the um not biting but the uh the the crossed arms technique like that really did help out a whole lot yeah we can go fight old beastie why not why not? Let's go say hi to old Beastie. And also, this will be extra spicy because if Damocles doesn't fall by the time we get to old Beastie, it's going to be... We're in, we're in for a rough time. I don't know what tier we got in Death's List there, but we got something. This is our first hit of damage, so Damocles is active. 
We want to at least get to the ascent so we can see what's inside of our item room. I used to have recurring nightmares as a kid. Um, mostly that came from movies that I used to watch back in the day. I remember the worst nightmare I the worst the worst running nightmare that I've had ever uh, was uh, being chased by the T one thousand from Terminator two. Uh, I don't know why, because <laughs> it's not a particularly scary movie, especially like when I think about it by now. But like, I'm also like a grown man, so like, it's. Yeah, I don't, I don't get nightmares anymore. But back in those days, man, like I, I used to have really bad nightmares about the T-1000 chasing me and uh, then the girl from the ring, like just just appearing out of nowhere and like getting really close really, really quickly. Like all that really like sort of jolts you awake. And the way that I, the one, eventually I got to the point where like I would get so startled in the dreams that like I would know that I'm dreaming and then that's when I started to realize that oh you can actually take control of this stuff this is your brain this is not anyone else's brain this is your brain you can you can do whatever you want and then ever since then like if I get even remotely a scary dream I'll just I'll just change it <laughs> it's pretty neat to do um sharks were another one of my main my main nightmares as a kid that I used to get all the time um, I used to be terrified, not terrified of sharks, but terrified of the, of the shark dreams. And uh, I'm just going to use this. And I wouldn't find a good way to break out of those dreams it's gone. Just until I realized that I can just make the shark just go away. And then that, those kind of, those kind of went, went by the wayside here. Wow. We're going to get, this would be super fan and stigmata. Every time Blood Oath moves, I think it's Damocles about to fall, and I'm like, well, I've, I've got no shield! Can't do anything about it. This turned out to be an excellent run at the end, though. Didn't really start off too hot, but, you know, again, I gotta say, early MB MVP definitely goes to Lord of the Pit. That is not a not an item that you usually hear me ever give too much praise other than like, you know, we need flying or something like that. that early mobility really, really helps in a big way. Jerry card. Yeah, we'll take Jerry card. Yeah, so I have I've got weird dreams. Some are weirder than others. There was someone who asked if I kept a uh, the last time I talked about dreams on the video. Someone asked if I keep like a dream log or anything, and uh, the answer is no, <laughs> I don't. Wow, cancer trinket is gonna be so huge for us. We also get uh, boom, which is gonna give us ten bombs. Now, even if uh, Damocles does fall, you will have plenty of protection against Beastie and Dogma. Airfront card. I mean, we could take that over the wild card or even the chariot card, to be honest. Actually, the, the Hierophant card makes more sense than Chariot card. The Wild card, between the Wild card, the Hierophant, and the Book of Revelations, we're going to be able to get five Soul Hearts back really, really quickly. So if Damocles does fall, and we also have D-Bizzle too, so. But still, if uh, if it falls, then, you know, we have, we've got a lot of forgiveness factors going on here. Dream of tears. Look at this. Look at this. All this cash here. 
First Justice is going to give us even more money, and this is just going to boost up our damage far beyond what far beyond what uh, we would have had without deep pockets. And yeah, as predicted, there you go. That was the that was the uh, Damocles strike, and jokes on you, Damocles. We've got all of our HP back. So what now, nerd? Strike me down, and I will turn even stronger. Which is ironic because Al Guinness actually hated Star Wars. So, the original Obi-Wan did not like Star Wars. man unequal's power really starting to take off and this is what you get when you get when you combine sack head with mom's key and money equals power it's just a it is like a loot bonanza out of every single chest that you find another hero fun card and we're just back up to full hp just like that no problem at all. Unless you get dad's coin, then okay. All right, we're finally here. Cars car is not going to help us out. Neither is high priestess. I'm just going to get rid of that. We've had a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of damage upgrades, courtesy of money equals power and and uh, deep pockets. That's what sent this damage over the edge for us. Okay. Dogma, but he's dead. Now it goes Dogma. It's on to old Beastie. Didn't think this would turn out to be an old Beastie run, but, you know, we did it anyway. That's okay. For a non-wacky Wednesday, why not, you know? Trying to zap him with 120 volt. There we go. Kidney Stone. Kidney Stone plus the stream of Guppy... Guppy uh, flies. There's a number on the burst damage of bosses. Not sure why Ultra Pestilence is floating so much over here. Very rare that you ever see him go on this side of the screen, let alone like start immediately moving this way. But Waiting for Kidney Stone to proc again. Here we go. War. Is a just a metric butt ton of damage. It's kind of funny how the watch Eye of Belial just kind of... It's almost like a fountain of tears. Whenever they got multiple targets, and they just can't tell which target to, like, focus on. Oh, I was going to kick out of that. Here comes old Beastie. And old Beastie is not long for this world. Though, admittedly, again, our damage really isn't all that impressive. Um, because we didn't really get too many, like, huge Insano damage upgrades. We usually do on a regular victory lap.
There she goes. And supplement your damage here with bombs. Make sure you're just not hitting yourself with them. That's going to be it. That one kidney stone proc on phase two is all we needed. So thank you for watching, everyone. Hey, that turned out to be quite the epic run. And uh, Damocles also fell. So for the first time in a while, we see Damocles actually kill Isaac. But either way, I want to thank you all very much for all the support. And uh, remember, for Wacky Wednesday, post your comments down below. Or you can go to our Discord as well. We have a Binding of Isaac channel there. Or check out the Simvicta subreddit. Either way, plenty of ways to contact through uh, very different platforms. And uh, give us your ideas. And, you know, I'd love to read them. And I love reading the comments. And thank you very much, everyone, for each and every one of you who do like and comment and subscribe to these videos. I really do appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Until then, so long, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. I'd like to thank some patrons of mine like Ryan Newsom, Jade Fright, and Daniel Lynch. If you'd like to have your name ran at the end of an Isaac episode, check out my Patreon campaign, which you can find down below, or by going to patreon.com slash Invicta.